Right lads, and it's time once again for another Irish football history lesson as we look back on a time that many younger Shamrock Rovers fans and just League of Ireland fans in general won't remember. A period between 1987 and 2009 dubbed the homeless years. It is named as such as in this 22 year period, Shamrock Rovers, Ireland's most successful club, were without a ground to call their own, playing out of a multitude of stadiums whether it be from their rivals or stadiums for other sports. It is also a time marred by a serious trophy drought for Rovers and even relegation to the first division in 2005, alongside of course financial troubles. Although that wasn't exactly something unique to Rovers in the 2000s. It wasn't until 2009 with the completion of Tallah Stadium that the Hoops would finally have a home to call their own once again, but it was indeed a very long road to get to that point. Shamrock Rovers were founded as a club in 1899 in Rings End D4. The club was named after Shamrock Avenue, where the club had their first facilities to stage meetings. The club would spend most of their early years playing out of Rings End Park, with the first 20 years of their existence being played at junior level in the Leinster Junior League. They would join the Leinster Senior League in 1921, not being able to qualify for the inaugural season of the League of Ireland due to their lack of senior status. They would, however, be able to play in the 1922-23 season of the League of Ireland. 1922 would also be the year that Rovers would first move to Milltown, settling on a piece of ground on the Milltown Road that they rented from the council where they would play up until 1926. In this year, they would move to another ground just beside the pitch they've been playing on for the past four years, leasing it from the Jesuit order and began development on what was to be their home for the next 61 years, Glemelor Park. The early construction of the ground was largely done by fans, building up a small main stand and building banks around the rest of the ground. It is also worth mentioning that in January of 1927, Rovers would officially adopt the green and white hoops that they are now famous for. For 61 years, Shamrock Rovers and Glenmalore Park would grow together, with the hoops winning 12 league titles and 23 FAI Cups in this period, including six FAI Cups in a row in the 1960s. The ground would see further development in the 1930s as the Cunningham family took over the club. Terracing was installed over the banks that were previously around the ground, and the capacity would be brought up officially to 20,000 with 1,000 seated. Although, as I mentioned in previous videos, these were different times often that 20,000 capacity was well exceeded. The Cunninghams would also be the ones to give the ground its name, naming it after their family estate, Glenmalure, in Wicklow. Beyond the 1950s, however, the ground would see very little development, besides new floodlights in the 1980s and the demolition of the old terraces. In fact, when European competitions would roll in in the 1950s, the ground itself wasn't actually suitable to host them. Rovers having to play their European games, including their introduction to the European Cup in 1950, against Manchester United in Daly Mount Park. In 1972, Shamrock Rovers were purchased by the Kilcoyne family. By this point, crowd numbers across Irish football had begun to fall rapidly, with the introduction of TV and, as such, English football into the homes of Irish families. The Kilcoynes initially wanted to bring Rovers back to the glory days of the 1960s, and once again bring fans back to Glenmalore Park. However, there was very limited investment in Shamrock Rovers by the Kilcoynes, beyond a wild experiment by Johnny Giles and Eamon Dunphy to turn Shamrock Rovers into a European superpower. The 1970s as such would be marred by a period of ups and downs for the club. The 1980s would prove to be one of the best and worst decades for Shamrock Rovers fans, and the last decade in Glenmalore Park. Under managers Jim McLaughlin and later Dermot Keeley, the club would win a historic four league titles in a row between 1983-84 and 86-87, alongside a triple-double in the latter three seasons. However, it would be in April of 1987 that the Kilcoyne family would announce that they were planning on selling Glenmalore Park, with Rovers moving into a ground share in Tolka Park with Home Farm FC. Yeah, the history of Tolka Park and its various tenants, it deserves a separate video. In the eyes of the Kilcoyne family, the sale and demolition of the ground, which had been purchased previously from the Jesuit order, was fully justified. At this point, attendances had well and truly fallen, with Glenmalore having an average attendance of between 800 and 1000, and realistically, Rovers had only been kept afloat by the money from the Kilcoyne's property company. Rovers fans, however, were justifiably not exactly happy with the sale of their ground, and a protest group, KRAM, Keep Rovers at Milltown, was set up. The final three games of the 1986-87 season were marred by various protests and an attempt by KRAM to buy the ground from the Kilcoynes. The final game to be played at Milltown was the FAI Cup between Shamrock Rovers and Sligo Rovers, which is ironic because Sligo Rovers were also the first side that Rovers had faced in Glenmalore Park. It was attended by 6,000 people and at half time there was a pitch invasion by both sets of fans in opposition to the sale of the ground. It was later commented that had them numbers shown up regularly, the ground would have never Ever being sold. However, inevitably, it was to be too late. A boycott for the entire 1987-88 season by KRAM would see Tolka Park virtually empty for Rovers' entire campaign. And the Kilcoins, now sapped of pretty much any revenue from the club, 
were forced to sell to patron John McNamara. The following season would see Rovers end up at Daily Mount Park for two years, the beginning of their ground hopping campaign that would last well longer than any Rovers fan would have expected. Continuous protests for the next two years by KRAM would prove to be in vain, as in 1990, Glenmalure Park was demolished as construction began on an apartment complex on the ground that had once seen so much success. In September of 1990, Rovers would move to the fourth ground in four years, as an agreement was made for Rovers to set up shop in the RDS, traditionally a show jumping ground. The next few years would once again prove to be a period of ups and downs for the hoops. They would get to the 1991 FAI Cup final, losing to Galway United, were nearly relegated in 92-93, and won the league next season under manager Ray Tracy. 1996, however, would see yet another move, as dwindling fan numbers would force McNamara to sell the club. And in April of the same year, it was announced that Rovers would once again return to Tolka Park. There would be a light at the end of the tunnel, however, as in December of 1996, Rovers' new owners, Premier Computers, headed by Alan McGrath, announced that Shamrock Rovers would be getting a brand new ground in the Dublin suburb of Tallaght, with the full backing of the local South Dublin County Council. This, and encouraging fan numbers at Tolka Park, would serve to lift the spirits of Hoops fans, but little did they know, it would be yet another 13 years before they would get out of this mess. The construction of Tallaght Stadium itself was to be marked by a series of setbacks, bureaucratic bickering, and Rovers worsening finances. Planning permission was acquired in January of 1998, however would be delayed till November of that year, by which point Premier Computers had ended their involvement with Shamrock Rovers. Joe Colwell would step in as a new owner, and Rovers would see yet another move to Morton Stadium between 1999 and 2001. Work had commenced on Tallaght Stadium between 2000 and 2001, however in late 2001 work once again ceased, with the drainage for the pitch having been laid, and the main stand near completion. Work would not recommence on Tallaght Stadium for another six and a half years. In this period, Rovers would face some of the worst years in the history of the club. Although they would reach the 2002 FAI Cup final, the club's finances would continue to worsen, not helped by the continuous moves between stadiums. Although most of this time would be spent playing out Tolga Park, they would add their fifth ground of the homeless years with a short spell in Richmond Park in 2003. However, they would be booted out by owners St. Patrick's Athletic in September of that year after fights broke out at a Dublin derby between them and Bohemia. The 400 Club would be formed in this period of turmoil, a fan group of trustees and patrons which would prove crucial for the future of the club, as in April of 2005, Shamrock Rowers would officially enter examinership with debts of well over €2 million. Euro. After a short spell in the High Court, full control of the club would be handed over to the 400 Club. This however still wouldn't be enough to stop relegation, with the Hoops losing the 2005 Premier Division playoffs to Dublin City FC, being relegated to the 1st Division for the first time in the club's history. They would however only spend a single season in the 1st Division, gaining promotion back to the Premier Division in 2006 for the 2007 season. During this period, yet another battle was ongoing, with disputes over the continued construction and usage of Tallaght Stadium in the High Courts. The GAA and local club Thomas Davis GAA Club joined the consultation process in 2005, arguing for changes in the plans of Tallaght Stadium to accommodate Gaelic games. The involvement of these two parties would further delay Tallaght Stadium by another two years, a period that saw some less than favourable disagreements between Shamrock Rovers fans and and Thomas Davis GA Club. Finally, however, in December of 2007, the High Courts would rule in favour of Shamrock Rovers and South Dublin County Council that the original plans would be upheld, arguing that Thomas Davis GAA had no previous interest in the development of the site. The end of the homeless years was finally in sight for Shamrock Rovers as construction of Tallaght Stadium recommenced in May of 2008, with the ground being completed for the start of the 2009 season. 22 years of homelessness, six stadiums and a relegation would all end on the 13th of March 2009, the same way they all started with a home game against Sligo Rovers. Ever since then, Rovers have been on the up. Winning back-to-back -back titles in 2010 and 2011, the latter year would also see a historic qualification for the Europa League group stages, and of course, more recently, a historic repeat of their four in a row that had signalled the beginning of 22 years of torture. Anyways, lads, thank you all for watching. Uh, this video, of course, took many, many hours of research, so I would very much appreciate it if you did like and share the video around. And of course, I am human, so I could have made a few mistakes here, so feel free to let me know if there was anything I missed or just simply got wrong.